We're going to break down some content that I have done in the last month or so and a few projects that I've been on before that. And I'm just gonna kind of go through them piece by piece, show you some behind the scenes, as well as my process in doing these videos. I'll do some screen sharing and some clip showing and uh, some behind the scenes phone footage that I have. So um, let's get into it. All right, so the first one I'm gonna break down, I actually just did this one this last week. This is uh, for a company called QTAC, QTAC Fire. I've been working with them for eight years. It's been a like, great relationship with them. Produce a lot of content for their social channels, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, um, as well as a lot of stuff for their print material and everything also. But this last project we just did, they got a UTV. Uh, it's a Can-Am Defender Max Limited. They put a bunch of time and effort into it and they wanted to do a walk around video of the entire unit. So I'll kind of show you some behind the scenes, a little bit of behind the scenes. I only have a couple clips. I need to get better about that. So Jason, he's the president of QTAC and this company creates firefighting apparatus. I'll kind of preference each of these videos I do with the company and what they do and kind of give them a little shout out too because I think that's positive. I mean, maybe if you're in the market for something fire related, you can do some QTAC product. We'll see. So we want uh, it, these QTAC videos, we do a lot of um, you know B-roll over the top of talking just to kind of like separate out a lot of that. They're, they're kind of usually quicker uh, we've been trying to get more and more into doing longer form videos just because they actually have more attention on YouTube and YouTube pushes them a little harder if they're over eight minutes. Quick note, if you're creating content, try to get it over eight minutes because it really does help out your viewership on, on the channel. This one that we just did, this walk around video is about 10 minutes long, 1045, somewhere in there. Yeah, 1045. It's a bunch of content we've created over the last six months put into this as well. So we've been on control burns. Uh, here's some control burn footage and I'll break some of those videos down too, kind of like the process of those along with just some beauty shots of the actual rig itself. Uh, this is all shot on the FX6 with the 35 millimeter F1.4 Sony lens G Master and the 7200 uh, F2.8 G Master lens. This entire video was shot in just those two lenses. The uh, burn burn videos, those clips in this video, were shot on the 24 to 105 as well as the 7200 2.28. Uh, the 24 to 105, it's for sale. If you want to buy it, I'll put the eBay listing down in the down below. Uh, I love that lens, but I am looking for faster lenses and more cinema lenses for my FX6 setup. So it's for sale right now, as well as a light I have, the Godox. Uh, 150 is for sale also. So if you're looking for a light and a lens, check it out. Great, great products, both of them. Just uh, looking to kind of up the ante a little bit. But anyway, I digress. So this video starts off with us doing um, some talking head, uh, just, you know, him talking about the, the overall uh, what the Can-Am Defender Max is. This whole video is shot in S-Log3, S-Gamut 3 Cine on the FX6, like I said before. One thing I've really started to figure out with this FX6 is just to really push those those blacks and the shadows down. You really don't have to overexpose with these cameras anymore. So you can kind of shoot at that like, maybe like half a stop over. If you really want to get crazy about it, one stop over, but you don't have to anymore, especially if you're, you know, color grading with like a phantom LUT or something like that. You could throw that on there and then, you know, tweak it from there. I found that if I push those those blacks way down and almost crush them, uh, and I'll just kind of show you my process here. Like I've got a top LUT on here that is the the Pike False Color LUT, and I'll adjust everything based off of that Pike False Color LUT. Caleb from DSLR Video Shooter has the, a great LUT pack that gives you a ton of assets, um, highly recommend it. And the one I use the most, bar none, is the uh, Pike False Color, SL3 17 by 17 by 17. Um, I use it all the time. And that's just, to, I use it in grading. I use it actually in the camera and I use it on my external monitor sometimes also. I know the small HD 702 Touch has a false color ma uh, map in there but sometimes I like to use that one just because it's already just right there and easy. It just depends on what I'm doing. All the B-roll was shot primarily on the uh, tripod. Uh, I got a new tripod. I love this thing. I've had it for about two months now, a uh, month and a half, yeah, about a month and a half maybe. It's the Sackler Flowtech tripod. I'm in love with it. Super crazy expensive, but in my experience, you get what you pay for. And this thing is like amazing. I, I absolutely love it. 
Uh, I've used it on like four or five shoots now. And every time I use it, I'm always blown away on just how quick and how nice it is. And that is pretty much coming to you from just an expense view. Like I have to use it because it's just too expensive not to. Uh, but I'm excited about using it because it's a nice tripod. So I digress. Let's talk about some of the uh, color choices. So I'm using the Phantom LUT. Uh, this is the Phantom Neutral LUT. I, I like the neutral the best. It's the best looking LUT in my eyes. Uh, I use the Legacy for it. I also, so I've got three adjustment layers. I have my base layer, which is the S-Log3 to, to wide dynamic range pre-LUT I put on it. And then I go with the uh, Phantom neutral fx6 65 times legacy so that's like the biggest and most robust lut you can put on this and then i just adjust each clip off of uh, what i feel or what i see in the false color so like you can see here uh, like the purples are crushed purple means that that's, that your blacks are just crushed at the time and i i think that's okay uh when i when i look at this on other monitors and everything. I've got two monitor system going on right now. But when I look at this on other monitors, there's no noise. Uh, it doesn't break it. Now, YouTube might break it. I have to look and see. I'll, maybe I'll up, update a little clip, or you'll see actually right now because you're watching this, um, if those are crushed really bad, if YouTube just like makes them look like crap. And the, it could do that. But I have found that most things hold up with this, um, with crushing the blacks like that. I think that it just, it, like the skin tones look a lot better. This is the newest version of the uh, Phantom LUTs. So the skin tones look a lot better. And overall, I think they just start, they, it's a good LUT pack to, to check out and to get. It's hard to recommend LUTs as like your primary color grading thing. But when I'm out in the field shooting on my monitor and I'm monitoring off of a LUT, and then I put that LUT into um, Premiere Pro, and use that for the video, then it just makes everything a lot easier and more streamlined. Like I'm trying to pump out stuff. I'm not trying to color grade every clip immensely. It depends on the project. That's a project by project thing. And I'll talk about another project here in another video where it is more like, you know, um, cinematic, if you will. These are, are meant to be kind of like that border between the two of them is kind of the way I go at these. I, I really, you know, we had discussed a location for this shoot and we discussed uh, multiple places. We ended up, he's a pilot, so he has access to the air fire station out at the airport and the fire station is not active. Um, it's, it's an active fire station, but they don't have anybody manning it ever. So we shot in front of the fire station and it's very applicable because, you know, this is about firefighting equipment. And so the firefighting equipment in front of the fire station is is pretty cool to have plus this blue with the red and the white and the skin tones jeans the black you know it all really ties together really well and looks clean um, as the backdrop for this shoot so it was it was a, a kind of happenstance to to get that for some of the b-roll stuff we have uh, just some clips of the headlights you know kind of overexposed and you drop the, the back down a little bit so you get that that nice glow from the light bulbs. Um, the interior shots were shot a little bit like at 12,800 ISO and then with some ND on it to kind of like expose correctly um, for the interior shots of the UTV. All the exterior shots of the UTV were shot in 800 ISO with a 35 millimeter on it. Uh, some of them were shot with the 7200. My favorite shots from this project were the shots down the center of the um, bays for the airplanes. So this shot has bays on either side with a center line down the center of the of it so for taxiing back and forth in there and i had him go all the way to the end of it and then drive towards me pretty fast with the lights on and try to center it up as much as i can with the um with the line the utv on the line and i used the, the that's the great thing about this tripod is i use a sackler tripod all the way across to the ground on the, with the ball head you know, cause you can, you can crush them all the way to the ground, which is awesome. And you can get super close to the ground shots. So I did that and then just did a static shot of it driving down that center. And it just looks, it looks good. The, the Fender Max looks great from the front. You can kind of see the UTV or the skid in the back of the UTV through the glass and he's kind of shadowed. And then once it's color graded, obviously it changes up the look of it quite a bit. Um, but I just think it, it just looks really good. It looks a little, uh, not to you know toot my own horn or anything but it looks kind of like top gunny because we're at an airport 
I oranged it up a little bit with a little bit of uh, that, you know, magenta, uh, green magenta shift on there. And it just kind of like looks a little hazy. Um, I, I personally like the way it looks, but that's just, that's just me. I shot it and uh, yeah, that's about it on that one, on that shot. It was my favorite shot of the whole shoot. And um, yeah, so that is my breakdown of the, uh, oh yeah, and the side shot too of the UTV kind of going by kind of fast. I guess I should say this too. All the B-roll was shot primarily in 120. Um, I like that super slow motion for some of that. And then I can speed it up or slow it down. Well, keep it at 120 or I could speed it up if I really want to, if I want like a little bit extra out of it. But I did shoot a few things. Um, only one shot made it into the actual video itself. That was not in slow or two shots, not in slow motion. That's the, the UTV coming straight at me. And then this um, shot of it on the side going by fast. And I like the freeze frame of that. I used it in, uh, in some marketing material for them actually, just kind of like an action shot of it going fast. Um, and it, it just looks cool to me. I, I like the, the green hue off of the windows. And, uh, and overall, just the, the look of this shot, I personally like a lot. So um, yeah. That's my first breakdown behind the scenes ish type video. I'm going to be doing more of these about projects that I'm on and I'm going to try to film more with like my cell phone or behind the scenes cameras type stuff when I'm doing these, because I think that, um, I've heard from you guys that you want some of that. And, uh, there's some people in this industry that are doing this really well, you know, like, like David Moorfield, he does a great job of this. I, don't want to model this directly after what he's doing, but I think it's a great idea to kind of show the process behind your content. Uh, Cranky Cameraman's another one. This guy commented on one of my videos and said, you know, we want to see more of that. And if you do more of that, I think that it can bolster your channel. And that's not everything I'm trying to do. Like I definitely want to make YouTube bigger and bigger and do more and more of this. But I think that uh, setting this up and having you guys see behind the scenes a little bit of, of my process can one help you out. And then it can also help me out because you guys are going to critique the crap out of what I do. So that's just what that is. I didn't use any lights on this. This is all going to be, um, just natural lighting, uh, no bounces, nothing. This is just go out with the camera and capture as much as you can with that. Um, I was, I was doing this all, all by myself. It's, and I'm not making excuses. I just, I have a hard time with moving quickly when it comes to trying to adjust like a scrim or a, or a bounce or something like that, as well as trying to capture, you know, content, because a lot of times we only have so much time to capture what we're capturing. Um, and some of that has to do with lighting or you know, our place that we're actually shooting in. And I know that that comes with everything. I think that some of these cameras can produce a great image without having to mold it exactly the way you want it to be every single time you go out and shoot something. It needs to be visually appealing audio needs to sound great, but I don't think that, you know, all of that stuff needs to be on every single shoot. It has its place. It has its time. It needs to be there. But on something like this, I think that that's uh, not overkill because I, I don't like to use that word because I think that it's, it's justified, but I think that it might not be totally necessary all the time. Do I want to do more of that? Absolutely. I want to make my images look as beautiful as possible. That's what separates a lot of cinematographers and videographers is that dialing in your look and that feel. And I'm trying to keep pushing towards that. So, uh, so yeah, office video breakdown, numero uno, Q tech fire, UTV walk around. I'll link it when it's up. Um, it's not live yet, but when it is up, I'll link it here. if you want to go watch the whole thing. So Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys got something from this. Make sure to hit a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.